Shut up again. As some of you might have noticed, either immediately or after years, I'm missing a finger on my left hand. My little finger is now an even littler finger. <laughs> what happened, Martina? Well, as much as I enjoy reading all your weird theories on what happened, what actually happened was that six years ago, we were doing some home renovations and I was just gonna make this nice little shelf thing. It was gonna be the last thing we did for the day and then boom table saw accident. And no, I'm not gonna get into all the little details, I'm trying to keep it PG here. Suffice to say, it was a zero out of 10 experience, would not recommend. But in the end, I'm just thankful for Norway's free healthcare and all the great doctors and hospital staff who tried to save my finger, it just couldn't and wouldn't be saved. <laughs> After two weeks at the hospital and a couple of months retraining my remaining fingers, I was left with this hand, with this huge scar going across all my fingers here, this slightly wonky ring finger that can't really extend or retract properly. Some nerve damage to all my fingers, which makes it impossible for me to find things in my pocket because I can never tell what I'm touching. And also this huge scar on my forearm from some blood vessel and skin transplants from when they tried to save my finger, contrary to some people's beliefs. All in all, it hasn't really been a big problem because I can still do all the things I enjoy doing, thankfully. And also, I'm right-handed, double thankfully. <laughs> But there are certain minor inconveniences I hadn't really thought of before. Like for example, supporting my phone or scooping dirt off the table or just trying to hold several small objects at once or lifting heavy things because essentially I just have three working fingers on this hand or crouching in video games without rebinding the keys or wearing gloves. Do you see how floppy this is? <laughs> I did gain a pretty cool party trick though. I'm sorry, I had to see that. <laughs> anyway, I want to try to solve all these little problems and at the same time become a cool looking cyborg. So the plan is to make a super cyberpunky glove with a working extending finger and maybe even some built-in lights. I mean, come on, of course I'm gonna add lights. If I can, like, how could I not? But before we get fancy, we just have to make a basic 3D printed finger that just works that can bend and extend. And I'm gonna use Nick's prosthetic finger as my starting point, which is an open source project that aims to, you know, make it accessible for people to 3D print their own prosthetic fingers. I'll leave a link to them down below because they're awesome. So first, basic finger, and then make it fancy and aesthetic. Yes. First finger assembled, so let's do a little test fit. <laughs> that looks so cool, man. Oh my God. I already feel like a robot. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's something. The mechanism in this finger that makes it work is actually kind of cool. So in each of the knuckles here, there is an elastic that makes sure that when the hand is in upright position, it goes back up, it springs back up. And then there's a fishing line connected to this wristband here that goes through the entire finger to the tip. So if I pull that, it works as a tendon that closes the finger. So the finger then moves with the rest of the hand. So when I close it, it closes open, open. It's just such a well-made mechanism and it's just, it's just fun to do this. <laughs> I can clap with one finger. You hear that? I'm gonna make some minor adjustments to the 3D model because you can see this part is a bit too long because it doesn't line up with the rest of my hand and it doesn't work perfectly yet. I'm gonna do some adjustments and I also got myself a pair of gloves. I thought for the next one, let's just try to attach it to the glove. See if we can have a glove, I can just go pfft. And then, yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> New 3D print, glove. I spent all day yesterday making this whole new finger, attaching it to a glove, filmed everything, everything was great, progress, awesome, and then memory card corrupted. Instead, here's a quick reconstruction of all the work I did yesterday. First off, I fixed the 3D model to make the finger socket shorter, and the time lapse of that is the only thing that survived from yesterday, so 
please enjoy. Then I 3D printed all the parts again, sanded the new socket so it would fit the other parts, figured I was lazy, so I reused all the parts from the previous finger instead of assembling a new one, and then chopped up a glove and glued the finger to the glove. And here we are. We have a glove with an attached finger. Nice. So the new socket I 3D printed definitely fixed the problem of the knuckles lining up. It's not perfect still, but I don't think I can make it any shorter anyway. So it's, it's pretty close, much better than the first one. It's hard to tell now that I've glued the finger to the glove, but the length difference between the first base knuckle and this one is like that. The first knuckle basically lined up with the second one on this new one. So this length is just much better. And also the glove attachment just makes it so much easier to take on and off at least when I get rid of this wristband. Improvements are being made. Very nice. There's just one more problem I want to fix before we get into the aesthetics, which is this wristband here. It's just not really that practical. So I'm thinking I could print a back plate that I can have on my hand here that can kind of hold the fishing line in place and have a little screw on the back plate that I can tighten it with. And then instead of having this elastic here, I'm just gonna have like some, um, the thing you close children's shoes with. Borrelos <laughs> around the wrist to tighten it. <laughs> yeah, so, so more more blender, more 3D, 3D stuff. <laughs> There's the back plates. It fits my hand pretty nicely. And it has this little hole on the front here for the fishing line and a little tightening screw on the side. Let's try to attach it. There. Super glue. Nice. And now the fishing line. I should have attached it while I had my hand in a fist because this placement is not good. Like there's a huge gap here. Just gotta take it off and on again. Oh, I hate super glue. That's better, I think. And now the fishing line. Right, let's put the fingertip back on here. <laughs> it works! And honestly, I think that works better than the wristband. Because this part is heightened a little bit, the fishing line gets tightened more, so it feels like it closes better. And also it looks 10 times more cool. And now everything's attached to the glove, do you see that? But even though this second version is looking pretty good so far, there are still some issues and room for improvements. But now... Before we move on, it's time for an ad for Milanote. Milanote is a tool for organizing your creative projects. It's basically like a wall where you can stick your sketches, notes, diagrams, images, ideas, anything, and organize your project in a visual way. For example, I used Milanote to plan out this project. So I started by laying out the basic plan for the first iteration of the finger, created a mood board to get my inspiration going, and made a mind map to sort my thoughts and materials and techniques that I wanted to use in the project. Then as the project progressed, I could just keep adding notes while having a good overview of the project. It's super easy to use. You can either start with a template like I did or a blank canvas and then just drag and drop notes, copy paste pictures, add arrows, to-do lists, color swatches, built-in links to websites or videos, and you can even sketch directly on your board. Milanot also makes it easy to collaborate with others on large projects. Just invite them to edit or send them a preview link and you can also download the whole board if you want to. So if you think this sounds interesting, Milanot is free to use with no time limits, so make sure to sign up with the link below and try it out for yourself. And back to the project. Now, here is an overview of the finger mechanism. And there are several points in which improvements may be made. First off, the stump socket. At this point, it is currently a little bit too small and a little bit too uncomfortable. So let's make it a little less tight, just make it a bit wider, give it some more space for a little bit of padding. And then there is the tip knuckle. You can see those two little holes there, those two. Well, this part around it is a little bit too small because it keeps on breaking. I'm thinking if we just take this top part, we just widen it a bit, maybe it won't break on me all the time. That'd be nice. I also think the bending motion itself could be improved. So the fishing line is the tendon, right? That is attached here. The problem is here because it has to go around there and then right there. The tendon has to travel. 
Nice. So I want to try to integrate this tiny little LED filament into the fingertip itself. See, we can just make a hole at the tip here and then we can just stuff the LED in there. Perfect. But this LED is going to need a three volt battery to be powered and a momentary switch button to be turned off and on. And that's a lot of things to stuff in one little hand. <laughs> well, my friend, anything is possible in Blender. See, we can just pop some holes in there and then just design a probably very overcomplicated mechanism just to push in the button. And we are left with a nice mechanism that has a power source and an on and off switch. Very nice. Cool. So I uh, guess we just have to 3D print then. Version 3 complete! Well, the main difference here is just we have an LED in the front and this little panel here that keeps all the electronics inside. Let's give it a test fit. Velcro to hold it in place. Yes! This is definitely a much more clunky version, but I think it looks kind of cool. So this plate holds the battery and the momentary switch button. And I made a custom fit lid on top just to keep everything in place. So if I turn this wheel and I slide this thing down, it holds the wheel in place. So the button is being pushed in. The little slider keeps it from bouncing back. And then we have lights. <laughs> and the light is custom fit into the tiny little fingertip. I'm not like a pro at Blender or anything. So I think it's kind of cool that I managed to do all of this. What was very difficult to fix was the tiny little wires for the LED because first I wanted it to go on the inside of the finger, but you know, that just caused the finger to not bend, which is an essential part of what a finger does. So instead I put them on the outside here, but that really just made it look more cyberpunky. So I think I'm gonna keep that for the final design. I'm just gonna integrate it more so it looks like it's done on purpose. This design is not final at all. It's very clunky and uh, unelegant. So that's what we're gonna fix. Elegantify it. Since the functionality was already there, I just went back into Blender and I took the models and I made them nice and aesthetic. Just added details, made them look cool. And I've 3D printed them and here they are. <laughs> so I've really just like made little greebles and little fake cables and stuff. And I think the design turned out quite nice. So the goal now is really just to take these 3D prints and try to make them look like metal. So it's time to make final glove the one glove to rule them all and to do that we have to start with sanding my favorite thing to do <laughs> yeah. sanding complete look at these things uh very smooth, very nice. So now we're gonna put on a layer of clear coat just to make it nice and shiny and glossy Spray Max Das Spritzwerkzeug 2K Clear Coat. Let's go! We've tried experimenting a little bit with different finishes on these 3D parts. These two boys right here, one of them is electroplated with actual metal. Like we've taken metal and put it on top of a 3D part. Like, how cool is that? It's now covered in one layer of copper and then some palladium on top to give it that silver finish. And it is most definitely so much heavier than the counterpart that is not covered in metal. The only thing I'm a bit worried about with metal plating everything is that this is a mechanical finger. Like this has to bend nicely and also it adds a lot of weight to it. So the combination of having a thicker skin and also being heavier might impede on the motion itself. But there is another option and it's called 
Duralumin. It is this really cool silver paint. I mean, it's not real silver, but it looks very convincing. It looks like metal. And using this, we avoid adding another thick layer on top of the clear coat. And also it keeps the original weight so it doesn't become so heavy. So for now, I think we're gonna go with Duralumin, but I can promise you we're doing electroplating in the future. And that means it's finally time. Let's build this thing. Mm. The final glove is complete! Look how cool it turned out! That is such a huge upgrade from the third version. I mean, this looks so clunky and ugly in comparison. <laughs> Not to mention the first one, I mean, so sad. In addition to this version, which has the LED at the fingertip, I also made this one. It's basically the same, just without the LED. It's a little less clunky and I think just more usable for everyday life. So now the question is just, is this thing actually practical? Like, can I actually use it to solve any of my problems? First, let's just try the phone thing. We did actually, it actually can support my phone. It holds it. That actually worked much better than I thought it would. <laughs> Like, even if I do this, it doesn't fall down. Huh, okay, cool, phone works. What about, I have to find something small. A lot of small things, hold on. You get a surprising amount of support just from this little finger, like it keeps everything from falling off. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, that makes a difference, come on. It's even like a hook that keeps it in place. It's just like, hey, it's hugging it, <laughs> keeping it inside. Oh, thank you, <laughs> my little friend. I'm wondering like, what's it like just picking stuff up? Grab this. <laughs> I just love how it bends around it. Oh. <laughs> Give me more objects, something round. What about something bigger? I mean, it doesn't have any proper gripping power because the only power there really is, is in the stump itself. And like, that's limited. What about scooping dirt off the table? Hold on, I have to, I actually cleaned now, so I have to <laughs> find some dirt and put it on the table. Oh no, look at all the dirt. And now if I scoop it, <laughs> it actually helps. Oh yes. Cause now there is no, just no edge. There is actually something that the cups it in. I guess one downside is that there's a glove here, so um, I get the dirt on the glove, but let's ignore that. I don't actually think it's gonna make a difference with carrying heavy things because it doesn't do anything for my gripping strength and there's no actual strength in the finger itself. So it's a passive kind of support. <laughs> let's try, oh, let's try the keyboard. Let's just try to push a button. Can I actually? This is. Come on! I'm holding shift! Oh god, sticky keys, yes, of course. I can type. Ah! I don't think it's gonna do anything for the crouching thing. <laughs> There's one more thing I wanna try. <laughs> Just putting on a glove. This is gonna be interesting. Um, some gloveception going on here. <laughs> At least it's not flopping anymore. That is so tough. <laughs> why, why would I ever? <laughs> so 
In conclusion, it doesn't really help with the tasks that require muscles, <laughs> that actually requires pressure, but it does help with just the support tasks, like scooping dirt or holding the phone. So that's pretty cool. But let's not forget, we also have a light to test out. I think with this light, it's gonna be most useful when you have to like look into very, very tight places that are dark. Let's say I somehow <laughs> drop something under here and I just wanna see what's going on there. I can just go twist, bloop, and we have lights. And I can just go, and that actually works. <laughs> I'm having a hard time filming this, but see, I can squeeze it in there and it lights up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It might not be the most useful thing ever. I think it might have been more useful if I had lost like my middle finger or my pointy finger or something. But I definitely think I'll be using it from time to time anyway. Do you see how cool this is? I mean, I've been wanting to do this forever and I'm super, super happy with the result. Just. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting, funny, weird, one of those. <laughs> also, a huge thank you to our patrons for continuing to support us. You guys are the best. And finally, we have a few sketchbooks and cutting mats left in our store. So if you want to grab one of those before they're gone, then uh, I'll leave a link down there if you want to have a look. And now it is time. Let's have a look at the final results.